Good day, folks. I'd like to talk more about the quantum power cell because it sparked a lot of interest in the community lately. And I just want to, for transparency at, at least, to explain everything I know about it. So, um, to start, some people are getting a little bit iffy at the idea that it might be moisture in the air. Um, to be honest, let's be honest, uh, I have no way um, lab-wise to um, statistically measure that from here, but I can't rule it out completely and say just because I can't measure it, it isn't happening in part of an aiding, facilitating the process of electron flow. But with that said, folks, I have to clarify, because even though we call many um, systems a dry cell, including the Zamboni pile, it does work on the principles of the moisture in the air. Now, what happens is as long as you've got non-corrosive um, cathodes and anode plates, the Zamboni pile has basically a thin layer, which is like paper or fabric, very thin kind of... Um, layer in between. Now the disadvantage of this is as these layers are, whether it's a paper, very thin by the way, because any thick will uh, null the effect. So you need a very, th I'll just to say it like hair thin if you could actually find that. So you stack your paper in between your two plates here and this is what generates with the help of the moisture. But as you can see with this simplified setup, we don't really have a specialized um, electrolyte that facilitates the ion flow. So instead, you're depending on the micro equivalent of what could be the pH in the air, the acid in the air to aid in that along with the moisture, which could be so minimal, you can even consider it a miracle that it even somewhat works. But needless to say, that's all that's needed. So you essentially build up your stack, you know, thousands of these layers until your Zamboni pile is built to the voltage that you'd like it to have. Preferably in the thousands of volts before it gets interesting so we can really take advantage of our pure potentials. So here's your Zamboni pile so we call this a dry cell, folks, even though technically it's the moisture from the air that facilitates the electron and ion flow. There's no properties at all. The, the, the um, separator is basically an, an, an insulator, an absorber of moisture to create this uh, mostly electrostatic effect between the two dissimilar plates. Now, because, of course, this is such poor electron flow. A major disadvantage, even though it works well, is the higher, let's say we, we bring this up to 100,000 volts here at the end. Well, the more plates we have here, we introduce what we're doing is basically building a huge resistor out of this thing. So even though I'm reading maybe 100,000 volts here, Let's say we're going to make it up. This gives us, because even though we call it zero current, there's always a statistical, so let's say one milliamp. So that one milliamp on 100 kilovolts, I might have like a one mega ohm resistance internally. So when you've got, you know, one milliamp with the resistance of one mega ohm, yeah, of course, it's going to be even that less in current. Which, of course, depending on the experiment, it, it may not matter, but what I'm getting at is, again, on its own, unless you do something to trigger uh, the, um, the vector, um, the pointing vector, and tap into that to get your watts, you know, you're not going to power a light bulb. It's not going to work with, you know, pico amps even that, you know, a thousand volts. But needless to say, statistically, it's a very interesting, the Zamboni pile is a very interesting, mostly electrostatic, and some of the reasons why it's got less uh, current than the traditional galvanic cell is all that internal resistance buildup, okay? So back to what I'm doing with a quantum cell by trying to make a solid state electrolyte, 
My goal is to build something like the Zamboni pod, but a much more efficient version. Now, instead of being that thin layer of paper that basically does nothing but introduce a massive loss, we could actually have something that facilitates the natural flow of um, ions. That would be the solid state electrolyte. Now, through other effects such as electrostatic quantum tunneling and everything else, that we're actively finding out about this stuff. It's active research, this uh, PEG electrolyte. So I don't have all the answers. I'm doing experiments myself as we speak. But the whole idea here is by facilitating the ion flow, we are able to increase the efficiency of the cell. Now, of course, um, if you want to say statistically, that uh, there's a bit of moisture that helps to facilitate, maybe not in complete, but in part. You know what happens, folks, is when you have a little bit of one system and a little bit of another system and then a little bit of another system, they all combine. And sometimes when they all work together, that's when you notice a gain at the end of the day, you know, because one is helping another system and they combine and it helps with the efficiency. So to be fair, this is probably what's going on with the uh, quantum cell. Now, um, I, I, can't, I haven't validated it for sure, you know, I've put it in the oven, I've cooled and I'm experimenting with this, but to be honest, folks, I don't have a cell that's actually older than two weeks at this point. But needless to say, folks, let's say that in part it does need the moisture, but at least it's not for ion flow, it's just to facilitate the electron flow. Well, that's not so bad because we can still, if these are to be put into thin plates, then we can take advantage of that system, just understand it and design it that way. So we could use the environment to help it out. If we don't want to do that, we could always um, not, you know? So it's just, again, I, um, don't see anything specifically wrong with that, especially if you're using non-corrosive elements for your electrodes and um, even Bedini folks, nobody complained about that. His crystals like uh, battery uh, required a drop or two of moisture every few weeks to keep it going didn't deteriorate the system in any way but you gotta remember he had like a crystal like stone structure in there right so it wasn't maybe if his crystals would have been cut into thin wafers he wouldn't even need to do that and let's say it did depend on moisture from the environment as a thin plate maybe it would have been able to suck it in on its own so again active development active research still trying to figure out exactly what is going on um, but I'm to say, to be fair here, that it is a combination of quantum tunneling, uh, electrostatic effect, um, maybe in part the, the moisture in the air, but it's all the, these systems combined together. As I've demonstrated in experiments and I've done the analy an analysis on the scope because I was interested at the um, transient AC it's superimposed upon the DC, the ripple, essentially. And it varies a lot in, in, in using my type of quantum cell anyways. I was surprised to read fluctuations random of about 100 millivolts. And when I tapped it, that almost went up to one volt for some reason. Again, I still don't know if it actually has piezoelectric properties. This is all, because you know what, folks, when you do the research about using this PEG electrolyte, it, it sends you basically on a dead end loop. Active research, active development, interesting combination, active researching, uh, want to be used for future next generation batteries, but we don't get any information. Any more than that. Okay, so who specifically is doing the research? What have they found out so far? What's their conditioning process? None of that is really made public right now. So what I'm getting at is the few that are actively researching this field may have done all these experiments internally and are trying to figure out maybe if this is going to be next generation battery storage devices they want to have the patent and the licensing on it so they obviously wouldn't put the process public right that's just a what i'm thinking it might be i don't know because um the research leads you nowhere all you know is that they're doing research so we got to do our own 
So with that said, um, I know a lot of people are mostly just interested in the solid state, so am I, but I'm trying to explain that most dry cells, even we call them officially a dry cell, do depend in part by some of the moisture and we don't see anything wrong with that if we understand it and incorporate that in the design. So um, with that said, I'm going to give you a slightly different recipe that you can try that I find is somewhat promising and interesting, but some of you may not be into this because I'm also interested in semi-state um, electrolyte, so semi-solid state, basically gel pack hybrid batteries, and gel packs are a thing too. So <clears throat> I have an idea and an application in the gel packs as well so if you want to create if you want to experiment with the gel packs it's very um, simple all you have to do is take that peg electrolyte mix that we've been talking about and mix it the same way but add a packet of the gelatine and uh, that will give you your gel like substance and also add your um, what I did is I used electrolyte sports powder to uh, mix that in, so that helps with the um, electrolyte, uh, the ion transfer as well. So again, once you have your gel, you're able to make, you know, essentially your gel pack cells, and again, ultimately you get the same uh, effect but basically it's a gel pack so just mix it with galatine electrolyte sports mix a little bit of water the peg the consistency thick enough but not not uh, too thick that she can't do anything but not too wet that it won't hold you know if you stick an electrode in there let it chill, let it, you know, and it'll settle like jello, and that's your gel pack. So I've been experimenting with that as well, but I don't talk much about it because the people are more interested in the solid state stuff. And I get it, I am too, less of a mess. But of course, there's potential in uh, gel packs as well, folks. So ju just putting out the information, and I hope it will help anyone who's. Um, into this and uh, trying to experiment as well and have yourselves all a great day.